to another video. This is a very exciting one for me because I have finally finished my first ever sketchbook. I know that may seem a little ridiculous. I am a full-time artist. I have been for a few years, but I have never finished a sketchbook cover to cover. I always tend to start them and either trail off and never touch them again and find them years later. I haven't kept a sketchbook in a long time. There's been a lot of intimidation for me surrounding keeping a sketchbook. I feel like online you see huge amounts of perfect beautiful sketchbooks with you know every page could be a print and it's all it's all gorgeous beautiful art covering these pages that's not me and i will tell you right now that's not the sketchbook you're about to see i use my sketchbook for a variety of things some of them nice and pretty yes and some of them I mean, like steps up from scribbles just to get ideas down and thoughts down and concepts in my head onto paper. So I'm going to take you through the whole thing. I hope you enjoy it. Please uh, like and subscribe if you do enjoy this video and let's get into the art. This sketchbook is actually from a Kickstarter that I backed a while ago. I think I shared it in a video, which I'll link it if I did, but it's by the artist uh, Jamila Nomf. I am probably butchering that name and I'm so sorry, but I'll put it in the description. And it was just a simple sketchbook, no fancy paper or anything that came with the Kickstarter. So let's go. So these first two pages, um, I basically wanted to test out Cobrick markers on them. I knew that it would bleed, of course, but I figured I would give it a go anyway and see how it does. So this is the bleed from the next page. But this first page here are some cyberpunk characters. Uh, cyberpunk 2077 had just come out and I was having a blast playing it. So I just did some quick character sketches using elements that they have from the character design stuff in the game. And it was really, really fun. I actually like the way the Kobix handle on the pages, but obviously there's major, major bleed through. So certainly not ideal for it as expected. On this next page, did a couple food studies. I did these on stream and they were okay. I wasn't really happy with any of them. I had never done food illustration before and I was kind of just testing it out. At this point, I was still like thinking of ideas of how do I fill a sketchbook? What do I put in here? And I was very nervous still about using a sketchbook because I was really stuck in that kind of perfectionism rut. I did some mouth studies. I think I had asked for requests of like studies and things to draw I can't remember because this is all the way if this date down here this was all the way back in January so a while ago um, on the left page here are and actually this top one up here on the right these are some thumbnailed images for a painting that I did I can link the or I can uh, put the painting over here for you to see um, I had shared these in a how I start an oil painting video which I can link above but yeah, these were just, uh, I started off with super quick thumbnails like this. And then once I found a pose in a position I liked, I did a little bit more of a refined thumbnail and then we move further in the painting process. And then over here we just have some feet and leg studies because feet are the bane of my existence. Next, a few more basic studies, just some uh, backs and back muscle practice and then ears as well because there's so many fun shapes and varieties of ears fantasy included at this point too i feel like i wasn't utilizing the pages very well like i could have fit a lot more in here especially if i'd put a little bit of thought into where they were going but i was trying not to put a lot of pressure on myself as i use the sketchbook and just stick with it that was the biggest thing next up more studies we have hands um, a lot of these studies were done on stream too. I do a lot of my sketching in my sketchbook um, study pages and stuff I'll do live on my Twitch stream. It's just really great practice. This was a thumbnail for and some sketch ideas for some folklore pieces I did back in February, which I'm sure have been featured in videos. Um, again, when I do thumbnailing, they're very quick, very brief. They do not take very long to throw together. I'm just trying to get down compositional elements and ideas of what I'm thinking. And then here I did a couple more specific studies of, you know, basically werewolf style body parts and things. Um, these were more thumbnails. Uh, this piece never ended up turning into anything else. This I did a full piece around uh, the well man folklore. Um, kind of a combination of a well view and then the coming up view, which I ended up doing for the final. And then there's quite a bit of overlap here of like things I tried that didn't work. 
I actually really like how messy this is simply because I think this is one of the first times I realized like this is a sketchbook. Who cares? Just get ideas down. If it's messy and sloppy, great. So I'm happy with this page even though it's kind of a train wreck. Yeah, and over here, concepts I tried, didn't like, never became anything. Some body pose studies on this side. And then this is sort of the start of a portrait series that I did. Um, I started the 100 heads challenge. And to be honest, I never finished. And when I first doing these, I wasn't like officially doing the challenge yet. So they're not numbered. But I was realizing after I did a few pages of head studies, I was like, oh yeah, I've heard about the 100 heads challenge. I should start that officially. So I think I got to like the 60s and just kind of tapered off, but still really great practice. Now these were some forays into inking and pen sketching. And these two pages are some of my favorite in the entire book. Um, I really, really love loose, sketchy pen work like this. These were done with Micron pens as well as a Pentel pocket brush pen. And I love them. I want to do more things like this. I actually really would like to do an entire observational pen sketch book where like I take it hiking and take it out into the world and do from life sketches just with pens. I really, really want to do more stuff like this. I adore this look. And honestly, without working in a sketchbook, I don't think I would have ever experimented with any Thing like this so I'm really really thankful for that next I did some stream requests for a while there on twitch I was doing some stream requests um, this was some bees and flowers uh, from a viewer and then some demon ladies honestly there are I think literally I would like to take all four of these and certainly these three and make them into full pieces I have ideas and plans as always <laughs> but this is really really fun i love drawing horns so this was fantastic um some mushrooms and concepts for a piece i started thinking about but ultimately actually didn't really like where it was going so just kind of a a quick hand thumbnail of it and i was like eh, don't love it so just filled in the rest with some mushrooms because mushrooms these were some fun little fan art doodles. Um, this is Tifa Lockhart, character from Final Fantasy VII. The FF7R Final Fantasy VII Remake had just come out and I had been absolutely adoring it and playing the hell out of it and felt like sketch and fan art. It was also fun to do this not very well executed but still fun challenging pose. <laughs> Um, and then I started to do a couple more over here of Cloud, the main character, but I really wasn't feeling it, so I stopped, hence this one is just a body pose and nothing else. These were concepts for a piece that I had that was kind of like an angel demon piece. I actually started this digitally and really ended up not liking where it was going. This, it's a concept I still want to come back to, but I don't know, I liked it on paper worked on it digitally as I typically do for my process and I just uh, I don't know it didn't work out sometimes that happens so I like the concept still and can come back to it if I choose next uh, I practiced over here on the left some eyeball flowers which I use the concept of for a digital piece I will pop right here for you real quick and these were just some sketch practice that I did for that piece. These were more viewer requests. This is a character from Warhammer 40k. And then this is an original character of a viewer, which, oh my god, how cool is it that I got to draw someone's original character? So awesome. And I really, really, really like this piece. So that's always exciting. Here we have more portraits that I'm pretty sure I did on stream. I can't remember, but again, this was kind of before I'd officially started doing the 100 heads challenge, but I'm clearly working my way to that. These were really fun. And in general, I love drawing people. So portrait studies are always good practice. These are concepts for a piece that I still haven't gotten past this stage of concepts. So I wanted there to be kind of an intimate feeling to it so I did a few like almost kiss studies and then along with some very like intimate hand touching type deal because I kind of want to incorporate that into the piece. This is a very basic thumbnail of a concept that I was thinking of for it and then there are going to be some arms and skeleton hands involved in the piece so I did some studies of those. Again this is one like if you can see the tiny date down here this was done all the way back in March. 
I still want to do this piece, but this is how my brain operates sometimes of just like, have an immediate idea, get it on the page. If we never come back to it, so be it. If we do, great. Next were some concepts for a piece that I scrapped, but I still had fun doing the studies of some kind of very scared crying eyes, a very cheery smile, stitches. All in all, I didn't love the concept after I'd done a thumbnail, so I moved on from it. And then this side I think might be one of my favorite pieces in the entire book. This was a viewer request piece who requested a like grungy, dirty version of a Tonberry, which is a recurring NPC character from Final Fantasy games, for those who don't know. And I was immediately picturing Ren and Stimpy style art as well as, okay, if you've ever seen uh, SpongeBob SquarePants, they have these moments in the show where they do like extreme close up of things and the cartoon style changes from the classic SpongeBob to like that very grungy, dirty look. And that's what I was trying to emulate. And I love this piece. It turned out so much better than I was expecting going in because I kind of just jumped in blind and I really, really love it. I love, I love my grungy boy. This was another uh, viewer request of this specific uh, piece. This is a historical figure, Madame Pompadour. I don't honestly know the history of it, but it was super fun to draw out the folds and things in the dress. A couple other viewer request pieces of a Luna Moth and then some happy La in love otters. So cute. Over here were some weapon designs, which was actually another viewer request. Um, so these, I, I do the little master sword and then went into some original weapon options, which was extremely out of my comfort zone, but very fun as a study. So I love viewer requests for that reason. It's often a really like good way to break yourself into something you never would have picked to draw on your own. Here we have thumbnails for some Legend of Zelda themed stickers, which I actually ended up going a very different direction with. I actually didn't do stickers, I did some botanical illustrations instead, very much changed gears, but I still have the, I actually fully completed these in their digital file for the line work, which I still have, may end up making them in the future, but they were fun to sketch out. I started some more over here and then didn't finish these two. This page over here is the official beginning of my 100 Heads Challenge attempt. The 100 Heads Challenge was started by an artist named Ahmed Aldori. I'll link him below. Um, he actually has a whole Pinterest board of, I think, more than 100 different uh, portraits of varying, varying everything. Some are sculptures, some are photographs, all different things. And he began this challenge. The goal is 100 Heads in 10 days. I knew that was not my plan. I was not doing 10 heads a day. It just wasn't conducive to getting other things done in my life. So I just wanted to go through it and get the practice. Again, my sketchbook goal this year was to fill one and this was just reinforcement of something to add into it and to get more comfortable with the idea of working in a sketchbook regularly. So I started in pencil and these I think are a little rough. You can kind of tell from my first one to my last one even, which was all in the same day at the same sketch session, how the line confidence grows. Like these last two, the line confidence is so much ahead of these ones and that's really cool to see. Um, more over here on the left, these are both from the 100 Heads Challenge. So lots of different variety. I really, 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 really like this one. Um, it just, everything in it worked and I like how my line weights came out. I used a lot of this to kind of experiment with that stuff too and basically see what I liked and what I didn't. These were done with a brush pen, which I'm not super skilled with, but again, practice, practice. And it was very fun, but I don't love most of them. <laughs> This page was timed challenges, so I gave myself 10 minutes for each one, so I didn't get much past a sketch for each, just because I was curious about doing timed things. And now these ones here were kind of where this challenge really, really, really started to come together for me. So I decided with these pieces, as well as the ones on the next page, to not do an under sketch. So all of these ones here, if we go back a page, I did a pencil under sketch before going in with brush pen with these. And for these, which I just used a ballpoint pen for, I decided to say, you know what? Screw it. We're gonna go big or go home. We're gonna practice without an under sketch. And 
This did lead to some, you know, imperfections and mistakes, but it also forces you to build line confidence because you need to be sure of where you're placing things because there's no erasing. And I loved it. This is honestly in combination with those um, pen sketches I showed earlier with like the microns and the brush pen. This seriously solidified just how much I love sketching in pen with nothing underneath. It is nerve wracking at first and I do think you kind of need to warm up a little, but you build so much confidence and I am absolutely completely in love with pen sketching again. This next page was more of those, you know, no, no lines underneath. You can kind of see where the, um, the pen from the other side tends to bleed through with pressure. So it leaves, you know, this was a purple pen and the bleed through gets a little bit pink. It's not physically bleeding. It's more like the pressure makes it show through the pages because this isn't a very thick paged sketchbook, but these were absolutely awesome to do. I really, really, really loved just sketching with the pen. On these, I started to work more a little bit with line weights for a more like bold graphic outline just to see if I liked it, which I did. And then this page, I incorporated something that I learned, I was watching a video ages ago. I can't possibly at this point tell you who it's from, which makes me sad, but it was a really, really good piece of sketchbook advice. So this was the last piece I did on this page. Um, and I had done one, two, three, four. And this one underneath where this is glued in, although it is coming up as you can see, I really hated it and it was ruining the whole page for me because I just, it just didn't work. And I think one of the most helpful things I've ever read about a sketchbook is if you don't like something, just cover it up. It's a sketchbook, who cares? I hated looking at it. So I redrew a new number 35 and pasted it in because now this page is lovely and doesn't make me angry. And you know what? If you don't like something you do, you are under no obligation to keep it or share it or show it. So I fixed it and now it's much better. Now there was, I think, a pretty big gap between when I was working on these and when I was working on these. Um, I kind of fell off of my sketchbook habit for a little bit. So I went back to pencil to get back into it a little bit. I also timed myself for these and only gave myself 15 minutes for each one. Next, we have some sketches from when I went on my Shenandoah road trip, which I can link that video above, which I've already shown these for that video, but I did some bug studies of different bugs we saw while in the national park, which was awesome. And then I did some studies of the caverns. We went to Luray Caverns and it was absolutely amazing. And I did some pen studies of these and these and these are both pen only no under sketch which rapidly is you know my favorite thing ever <laughs> i do it a lot plan to continue it i actually want an entire pen sketch sketchbook and i am thrilled to have that these were some sketches for my new sub badges on twitch i really um, wanted to update those so i did some concept sketching over here these are extremely random and they came about from i have been watching original like og sailor moon with my kid and we have been loving it it is her first time seeing it i haven't seen it since i was about 11 and boy is it a riot and i just felt like sketching some sailor moon stuff but i kind of wanted to put a little bit of a dark twist on it so i worked on this new costume and then i also did kind of almost like a Punisher Sailor Moon because that's like her signature uh, signature line is like, you know, in the name of the moon, I'll punish you. And so I did this very dark <laughs> Sailor Moon Punisher version in the, this was trending for a while to redraw Sailor Moon in this pose that was going around from a screenshot from an episode. So I did that with my dark creepy version, which I love. And this actually spawned a project I will give tiny snippets of later on. <laughs> more heads because you can never have enough heads in pen. <laughs> this side is actually some concepts for an original character that I have thought of that is kind of loosely based on my kid but also a general concept that I have in my head for I think a cool character in general. So I, I know I'm being super vague. I'm not really ready to go into it all. Once I have her a little bit more nailed down and established I plan to make a whole video about it because OCs are sweet. 
But yeah, some basic sketching for that. This was a page of thumbnails because I was feeling really uninspired and I wanted to try and kick myself out of it by just concepting a few things. Um, this is one I'm definitely gonna make into a larger piece. This was actually based on a painting that my dad had done. He was a artist for his whole career and he has this painting I remember hanging in the house from childhood and I was kind of recreating it from memory to potentially do like an homage to but I'm not sure I will. Um, and then just a few more down here. This one I've written nope on because boy nothing about it worked. These are kind of some almost like flash tattoo ideas that I had. I really like the idea of just simple flash illustrations. They're very, very fun. They're nothing I've ever really done a ton of, but I actually really like coming up with cool designs to draw. So I really, really enjoy doing that and wanted to do some more. These were a couple other sort of thumbnails, sort of just um, sketches, I guess. They kind of have now turned into thumbnails for other things. This definitely was an intentional thumbnail. These where I had an idea for a portrait with, uh, you know, a figure with T. I definitely like this one far more than this one, and I think I'm going to expand this into a full piece. This was specifically a thumbnail for a piece I am currently working on, and I actually did some follow-up sketches for it. So here, there are kind of some techie, vaguely cyberpunk-esque um, bits and bobs, really, that I just did some practice sketches for because I don't typically draw a lot of stuff like this. On this side are some botanical sketches of specific things to be used with a final for this piece. So this page and this page kind of go together. It's just some practices for that. And then over here, I have kind of covered some things because I wrote a ton of notes on this about the concept of these pieces, and I'm just not quite ready to share that project yet. So I've covered them up just because I don't want to have the... Uh, don't want to have the all the the project out and about yet <laughs> but you will be hearing about it in the future as you may have guessed by looking at these it is sailor moon related i have some sketches of the different pose that the scouts end in because i'm going to use those in the concept of it but i'm excited for it i hope it works out the way i want it to as as everyone does i suppose but yeah not quite ready to talk about it in full so just censored a few things This next page was some skirt and bodysuit studies that actually kind of go along with that Sailor Moon project I was just very vaguely talking about. Over here was some general clothing studies just for folds and things like that, just quick sketches with pencil. And this was actually just an image when I opened up Pinterest that I saw and really liked it. So I said, you know what, it's going in the sketchbook. Sometimes if I can't think of anything to draw, but I want to be sketching and doing something with practicing or just, you know, getting some art down, I will pop open Pinterest, browse my homepage, and anything that strikes me, I will just sketch up. These are actually some storyboard pages, something I think I'm going to use my sketchbook for a little more in the future. I've storyboarded out a few options for shots for YouTube videos, in fact. Um, this is storyboarding ideas for the intro to the Copic Marker series I'm gonna be doing soon. And then I also would like to film a proper channel intro, I think at some point, um, just a short one for the beginning of my videos instead of what I have now. So I was kind of concepting thoughts about that. These next two pages are back to pen sketches. I did some mushrooms because they're just so much fun to draw with all their little gills and nooks and crannies. I love it. This was at the suggestion of a Twitch streamer I was watching who suggested drawing fish because I was like, I don't know what to draw next. So I did some fish from the Genshin Impact game and then also a few from Breath of the Wild to have a nice little fishy page. Next, I did a couple pages of body poses because it's always good to practice different body poses, some a little more extreme than others, but it was really fun to practice. Then over here, I did some with like heavier, bigger body types and man, realizing that when you try and find references for those, there is very, very little to choose from, which is very, very sad. In fact, quite a few of these were actually other people's drawings and things that used larger bodied people and I used those just as reference for pose practice because there wasn't a lot that I could find of IRL full bodied people and that was kind of sad. Also on this page are some testing that I did from like back at the beginning of the sketchbook. I did testing of the different pens to see how it looked on the paper, some Copic marker testing to see about bleed and blending and just various different things to see how they look and work on the page. So 
kind of put in the body poses around that. And then for the last page, I have this cute little reaper, which started out just as a clothing study of this drapery. And then as soon as I got the shape in, I was like, this would be a hilarious, ridiculous reaper. So I decided to make a silly little the end sign to wrap up my sketchbook. And that is the whole book complete on time for my goal of completing a sketchbook this year with a few months to go. So I hope you enjoyed. Alrighty, everyone. Thank you so much for watching today. I hope you enjoyed the tour of my first ever completed sketchbook. I'm really excited to have this goal accomplished and I actually have plans for multiple sketchbooks going forward, which might be ambitious, but I'm not setting any goals to complete them. I really think that finishing this one established everything that I wanted to, which was making a regular habit of sketching and utilizing a sketchbook. It also really, really broke me out of that fear of needing to have a perfect, beautiful sketchbook. Not every page has to be pretty, not every page even has to make sense. It can just be whatever you want it to be. And I really wasn't there when I started this sketchbook. And as I continued with it, I very much got to that point. So I'm super happy I decided to make this a goal this year and was able to accomplish it. And I hope you enjoyed seeing all the sketches, messy or not. Thank you so much for watching. Take care, everyone. If you liked what you saw here today, please do subscribe. I'm working my way to those first 100 subscribers still. So be well, stay hydrated. Until next time. <laughs>